Dear colleagues and friends, I have the honor to present the results of the first 10 years of the Baltic Experimental Archaeology Summer School. This project turns 10 years old this year. To better understand what led to the creation of this project, we should go back to the beginning of 2000s. During the early 2000s, experimental archaeology was heard of in my country, Latvia, but the idea about it was really superficial. There was an overlapping of the content of the terms reconstruction, reenactment, archaeological experiment. During that time, the only professional specialist in Latvia who had devoted his whole life to experimental archaeology field was an archaeologist, Johannes Appels, with his reconstruction of Arashu Lake Wooden Fortress, nest until 10th century settlement of the Latgalians, the Eastern Baltic tribe. Later, some experiments in iron induction were also carried out by Professor Armand Sweeps from Vanspils Museum. During early 2000s, I was a creator of one of Latvian historical reenactment clubs during years of 2003 until 2009. It was oriented towards the investigation of a daily life of ancient Baltic peoples of the early Middle Ages called Sanzeme. Looking for the time distance, we can say that being a participant of a larger process is hard to see where you exactly are, especially that this movement itself is largely driven by principles that can be applied to subcultures. To a large extent, this leads to superficiality, buying things instead, instead of making them yourself. It was clear that this movement is more about socializing and getting things done with modern tools while telling the public about authenticity. At the time, scientific information became more widely available, experience accumulated, and it was clear that including the term experimental in the names of reenactment clubs and even folklore groups is, to put it mildly, frivolous. At a certain point, it became clear that the existing form of activity and self-definition is not satisfactory and doesn't correspond to reality. However, we all know that people perceive and learn new things at different rates, and this led to arguments, conflicts and divisions. When the world economic crisis took place in 2008, Latvia's largest experimental archaeology project, Arish Archaeological Park, was added to the Latvian National History Museum in Riga as a branch for the purposes of austerity. It seems that uh, at the time maybe five, six people in the whole country had a deeper understanding of what experimental archaeology is as a science. It's also not unimportant that in 2008 I participated in my first exarch event. This created an understanding that the imaginary gap between Latvia and the West is not so big, that the discussion is about similar issues. It was crucial to see it in person. In history, reenactment was fun time, it was good experience, but when the old club split up, part of its members formed an association called Primitivist. Uh, the group was strongly oriented towards real being in nature, hiking, exploring archaeological heritage, learning prehistory skills and the search for the missing authenticity since 2009. Despite this, quite many young people found their way to the new group, who without really delving into the content had thought that learning medieval sword fighting is already taking place here. It was a surprise for us as an organizers and a bit annoying too because we really didn't want to create wanted to create another reenactment club where everyone is festival oriented and uh, doing more or less the same things because they copied some good idea <laughs> or going to the old summer camp with electric and even gasoline tools. It was clear that living history is still popular around 2010 and a decision was made to create a small side project called CAV, which would be more oriented towards sports, hoping to generate a much deeper interest in older periods in some of the participants. Uh, it led uh, to 2015 when the Society Latvis Archeo Clubs was established on the basis of both groups, uh, which included the idea of combining the best aspects of the previously mentioned. In early 2013, being an employee of the Latvian National History Museum, also being a member of Latvian Association of Archaeologists, as well uh, as a lecturer in Latvi University of Latvia Faculty of Humanitarian Sciences Cultural and Social Anthropology program, during the discussions with colleagues, the idea of a joint camp was born. The camp where archaeology students would get to know the technologies of prehistory and to learn to formulate questions for 
an archaeological experiment, while future anthropologists would learn field research skills while living uh, together in the Bronze Age house replica in Araishi. The project was successful and raised hopes that this field would gain a solid place in education. Before the camp, Lithuania and live archaeology days in Kernava were visited and flint was collected in southern Lithuania. During the camp, pottery was made, a small fence was built, a fish, tra fish trap was made, amber was drilled, flint was worked, uh, and uh, bronze was tried to be melted, at the, and also the spark catcher made by Apals inside the Bronze Age building was tested. Reports were written after the camp and credits earned. In 2014, the project sadly didn't take place due, due to external reasons. In 2015, there was an attempt to repeat the project in the initial form and it was still held in Arashi, but it was quite poorly attended, largely due to the bad weather conditions. The expected student response was also smaller. Only one archaeology student and two anthropology students participated. One of the students, uh, after two nights, caught a cold, cold and left. However, in the second half of the week, we refocused on involving museum visitors in the activities and returned with a rather valuable experience of outdoor life, some entertainment skills and interaction with visitors. We also learned that bronze can be melted and casted even during extremely humid weather conditions. In 2016, previous mistakes were taken into account and the organizational side was improved. This year everything went quite successfully. Students of both history and anthropology participated. Also, the tradition of guest lecturers was introduced uh, to invite uh, certain specialists from various fields. This year, lecturers Gvida Slach and Virginia Rimkute from Lithuania visited us. Several students also visited Lithuania for collecting flint again. Next year, the Arash Archaeological Park was incorporated back to the jurisdiction of local municipality, and as an organizer of summer school who did this as a part of the state's work, I lost the justification to organize projects there. That year, uh, the Society Latvis Archeo Clubs took over the organization of the summer school and we moved it to Lutzausal Island in Riga. There, uh, since 2015, in the rented abandoned former gardening area, the society has gradually been working on creating a small demo version of an actual archaeological park. Moving the summer school here created new challenges and possibilities as well. Uh, in 2017, we started inviting guest lecturers even more widely. Geologists League Zarin and Maris Rudzitis bowmaker Maris Zvars visited summer school. In 2017, also a first cremation experiment was undertaken in Lutzausal Garden. Uh, since then, two more experiments of this type have been done. 2018 was a year where two not completely successful experiments were done. One with the building of a bread oven and the second one of imitating antique coins with the involvement of Martin Schwaber, a researcher from National History Museum Numismatics Department. Quite successful was a workshop, it was well attended, uh, a workshop of late Iron Age bronze uh, horseshoe shaped brooches by a jewelry maker Martin Skuja. On 2019, school was really well attended. Uh, one of the most attended lectures was about ancient textiles by a researcher Irita Jaire from National History Museum with a collaboration with the textile artist Livo Caprale. Uh, this lecture attracted the most audience. Uh, this year we were also visited by Lucia Levine from Prehistory Alive Worldwide from the Netherlands, uh, under whose guidance we learned how to make prehistoric fishing nets. During the summer school also several Bronze Age axis replicas were casted for the school project school SWOM uh, in collaboration with Latvian National History Museum. It was the year of COVID-19 pandemic. This year, the cycle of one-day individual events was fully established. Despite the extensive restrictions, outdoors events took place, but more with the idea to keep the summer school tradition alive and not to lose continuity. Despite this, around 35 people visited summer school and three of them were archaeology students. 2021 was the most well-attended year in the history of the summer school when uh, more than 100 visitors took part in the workshops, including seven archaeology students. 
This was mainly thanks to active promotion of the school in social media and developing the policy of one day separate topic event cycle. More time this year was dedicated to the prehistoric bone working skills by Rain Sindans, a historian, also a primitive hunting tools and flint working expert. First time we had a medieval painting masterclass also by the art restorer Dmitris Laschetko from Latvian Academy of Arts. Also, a medieval clay brickmaking masterclass was provided by the architect Sabine Erte, CIA at the time. 22 was also a good year, however, the record of uh, 2021 wasn't reached. Uh, the school was visited by 61 visitors, including three history students. Lots of old and a couple of new topics also were investigated, like, uh, for example, production of Neolithic and early Bronze Age polished axes by the Sindans. Summarizing the conclusions of the experience gained so far, it can be said that the first thing that comes to mind is an observation in a wider context about the dynamics of the de development of public interest and involvement. Around 2015, it became clear that the number of potential participants who are ready to live outdoors for a whole week is not large and even decreasing. Even living in a comfortable tent uh, can be terrifying to many today. As the organizer of the old camps, this realization was quite painful for me at first. Thinking about the reasons for this trend, I think that, the beginning, uh, that its beginnings coincides with the beginnings of the smartphone boom, which to a large extent currently also coincides with the decline in popularity of historical reenactment movement. This was also reinforced by the effects of the restrictions of the COVID pandemic. However, the change in trends forces us to reassess the offer and to adapt to a new conditions as far as possible. Second thing, content creation versus promotion. <clears throat> General digitization has, has uh, changed thinking, uh, perception, desires, public attention span. On the other hand, uh, as a creator of a content, I have a challenge to actively improve myself. Using an analogy from the martial arts, aim of the coach is not to remain at the level of the white and yellow belts for all his life and uh, train beginners all the time. However, they provide the project with most fees. However, positive aspects provided by digitalization of archaeology and experimental projects and cultural heritage projects should also be understood, especially the tragic events in Ukraine where, you, where not only people die but also cultural and archaeological values are destroyed and looted make us think about this, but digitization allows to preserve and make any information available for future generations, including uh, information about archaeological experiments. Oh, Baltic Experimental Archaeology Summer School has become from a strongly student-oriented project um, more open to children of a younger age. To attract and ensure the number of visitors, it is necessary to adapt to media-influenced fragmented perception of general public, and therefore the week-long summer school is organized as a separate group of one-day Facebook events, immediately publishing everything on social networks. As much as I don't hate creating Instagram story stories, it cannot be denied that it's uh, quite difficult to reach out to young people in other ways. From the other side, there have been visitors from Finland, Hungary, Germany, Japan, Turkey and Pakistan. Uh, the involvement in the program of popular lecturers or topics also has justified itself, uh, even though the connection with scientific experiment can be sometimes conditional. Such topics, of course, should not suppress the initial idea. Uh, it should be noted that despite the full efforts, it is still not possible to learn and specialize in experimental archaeology in Latvia on an academic level, which is related to reduction of funding for humanitarian sectors of higher education where the state policy supports sectors that promote industrial production. However, the work invested in organization of summer school is not in vain. Several hundred people have attended the school. A recognizable place of activity has been created in Lutzau Solom, a kind of miniature archaeological park. A section has been written and published for the Latvian Archaeology Handbook, which also includes information about the summer school. Also, a promising aspect is that the cooperation with Faculty of History and Philosophy continues, which hopefully will result in the at least partial inclusion, inclusion of experimental archaeology in the new reorganized history study program. 
Anyway, you are all welcome to Riga in the last week of July. Thank you for your attention.